Nicotine does not give you calcium. Really? Nicotine is uh, dangerous for you, your body, if you are to compare something with smoking is not relevant because uh, smoking is death. Anything you can choose instead of smoking is saving lives. And when I consume nicotine, I don't die from it. I don't know how I'm getting hurt from it. I have not heard any uh, died by using a nicotine pouch so far. The same way as I take a cup of coffee. Marcus Lindblad. At the vanguard of the nicotine industry's seismic shift, Nico Kick's legal mastermind is rewriting the rules. His razor sharp insights cut through controversy, charting a bold course from harmful smoking to safer alternatives. They can develop the products, they can put it on the market because they just want to try to fool people again and kill them again and find other, other ways of doing it. Right now in the US, there's a lot of states where uh, weed has been legalized. So even smoking weed, does that cause lung cancer? You're legalizing the weed and banning cigarettes. When you smoke, the people around you are also getting exposed to it. Out of the 8 million people around the world I talked about that die from uh, smoking, 1 million of those is passive smokers. And what does the climate look like in, in the US? I, I suppose our st stats are more grim. The most important part for everyone to know is that... Uh... The Avenue of the Strongest is a podcast dedicated to exploring the lives and experiences of the most inspiring individuals from around the world. Each episode features interviews with fascinating guests who share their insights and wisdom on a variety of topics, including education, impact, motivation, health, and learning. Here are your hosts, Aniette Chowdhury and Vlad Suleiman. Marcus, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Good to be here. You know, I would like to start our conversation by asking you what is something that you wish everyone knew about the nicotine? Uh, the most important part for everyone to know is that uh, nicotine, no, the nicotine doesn't uh, give you cancer. That is a misperception that I hear and I have to answer the questions on and on and on and on. Nicotine does not give you cancer. That's a good thing to start our conversation with because, for, I mean, I, I don't know much about the subject, but when I think about nicotine, I immediately think of cigarettes and I think of cancer. Yeah. So that's a, that, that is a, that's a great thing. So nicotine does not cause cancer. That's what they usually yeah. put on, on, on the pictures of the uh, cigarette packs. Exactly. Because, I mean, the smokers today, they are uh, dying from the smoke, but they just want the nicotine. So, mm -hmm. so that's the problem with the cigarettes and it's the particles when you're from combustion. It doesn't matter what you smoke. It could be from your barbecue grill, it could be paper, it could be a fire, it could be anything. All smoke hurts your lungs and uh, give you cancer if you're exposed to the smoke for a long time. Because it's the particles that comes from the smoke that gives you cancer. Mm -hmm. not, the, not the nicotine or not the substances in, in the smoke. It's mm -hmm. the particles. That is the poison that part. Do you smoke yourself? I never smoked, actually. Uh, I uh, started to use uh, uh, snooze the nicotine pouches when I was 30. So that's my history, my nicotine history. And why do you even start it in the first place? Uh, I mean, it's... No, it's, uh, it gives you some kind of uh, focus. It was uh, when I started my uh, career within... Uh, impacting people and helping people and companies uh, doing uh, creating a better world and before meetings to get the focus and, and to get sharp uh, that was when i started with uh, nicotine mm -hmm. you get de-stress but you also get uh, some uh, increased concentration and focus and that was what i needed before my uh, pitch meetings and my important presentations since we since we touched about the pouches, let's speak about it a little bit more in details. So you know, when we all speak about smoking cessation, many are you know quickly to point out that alternatives like the pouches, like nicotine pouches, vapes, and other are just you know other you know and other altern uh, alternatives. And um, how do you respond to those who believe that nicotine alternatives are simply a way to re just de repackage addiction? rather than the true steps towards the public health. Yeah, for, first, uh, I would start to say that uh, 
to compare something with smoking is like uh, it's not relevant because uh, smoking is death. I mean, when it comes to smoking, every second smoker uh, is dying, getting a premature death, and that counts out to eight million people uh, annually around the world. Eight million wow. people. So hey, come on, come on. Keep in mind that the COVID, the big crisis all over the world that we followed in media uh, every day, day and night, they, COVID took two million people from us around the world. But smoking takes eight million people. And that's the same amount of people that died during the First World War uh, over three, four years. So smoking is killing you. That's the number one. So anything you can choose instead of smoking is saving lives. Then you can gamble into what is better and what is uh, different harm and what, what should you actually choose uh, and uh, discuss that one. But to finalize your question, when it comes to addiction, I would say that what is an addiction? I mean, we are addicted to water. We need water to drink every day. We are addicted to love. We need, uh, we need to hug someone and uh, feel cozy, cozy during the evenings. And so, so we are addicted people. And from my perspective, addiction is something uh, that you get hurt from. That's something, that's something that impacts you in a bad way. And when I consume nicotine, I don't die from it. I don't know how I'm getting hurt from it. I have not heard any uh, been killed by using a, a died by using a nicotine pouch so far. Uh, and the addiction, so addiction is a philosophical question. The later you start with nicotine, the less addicted you get. Uh, so, so I have uh, not a problem to be a day or two or three without without uh, pouches. Uh, for me, for me, it gets the focus, and I know that it's not harmful for my body. As long as I am not uh, getting pregnant, and I don't plan to uh, to do that, uh, and I don't have any problems with my heart, uh, then uh, where is the risk? I don't face any risk. And, uh, yes, I am addicted to it, to it because I like it, and I get focused from it, and I, I think my life gets better when I'm using it I, the same way as I take a cup of coffee. Right. You know, it's it's it. very interesting. I noticed that. These pouches are more uh, famous in Europe because when I was, I think I was in Europe, in Sweden, actually, maybe 15 years ago. And this is the first time when I noticed these pouches and I was wondered that most of the people are just using the pouches instead of the smoking. And in the U.S., it's, I never even saw these pouches here. No, but I mean, Sweden has a history from using the tobacco snooze where, where you have uh, tobacco leaf, molded uh, tobacco leaves. And uh, a little bit, for a few years ago, they started to put them in a pouch, so it was more convenient to use them. But then uh, we stripped out the tobacco and then uh, put in just a flavor binder and some uh, uh, coconut fiber or something, and then just add on nicotine. So it took away all the tobacco and just filled it with the nicotine. So it's uh, white in when you put it in the mouth, and it's white out when you take it out. And I mean, in US, uh, nobody talks about uh, nicotine pouches. Uh, everybody talks about Sin. Sin is the leading brand in US, and it's been it's been uh, Tucker Carlson has been uh, promoting it in the media and, and so on. So the market for uh, the market for uh, nicotine pouches or the Sin in US is skyrocketing. And if we look at, for example, California, uh, it's Passed, it has passed uh, the nicotine pouch has passed ten percent of the total nicotine consumption. So if you cal calculate, if you take all the vape, all the cigarettes, all the cigars, all the cigarillos, all the chew, all the dip, everything, nicotine pouches today counts for more than ten percent of the total uh, usage. So, so nicotine pouches are coming. Uh, I mean, it's you, you you get the nickel kick from it. And uh, you don't distract your surroundings. There is no passive smoking or no aerosols that is getting out. Uh, you don't get brown on, in your mouth like if you have seen, a, you know, the Midwest dip. Uh, so, so it's uh, convenient and it's fresh, tastes quite good, and you, you get your nicotine if you would like to 
consume iniquity. This podcast is sponsored by Argo Prep, an award-winning educational publisher serving over a million students nationwide. If you're a kindergarten to eighth grade teacher or principal, be sure to check out our supplementary workbooks to get your students ready for standardized state testing. We cover all subjects from kindergarten to eighth grade. Use the coupon code AVENUE for a 25% discount off of all purchase orders. Visit us today at argoprep.com slash store. This is a very interesting conversation. And uh, so again, I, I'm going to go and take us to the beginning again. So nicotine does not cause cancer. It's really smoking uh, that can cause cancer or that causes cancer because of all the particles uh, that enter into your lungs and cause a damage over time. Uh, is that's and, and you mentioned that it's really smoking anything. So right now in the U.S., there's a lot of states where uh, weed has been legalized. So even smoking weed, does that cause lung cancer? Because of you're course, still, of, right, of, of course. course. So it's a smoke. It's a smoking aspect to it. Uh, yeah. But so you're legalizing. You're legalizing the weed and banning banning the cigarettes. And I think it's correct that uh, cigarettes should be banned. Of course, mm-hmm. it's it, you, you. You die from it. Another good aspect aspect is that when you smoke, the people around you are also getting basically hurt, exposed to it. While when you have this kind of like pouches, it's basically only you, right? Yeah, but that is so. Uh, of course, uh, this when you smoke is correct. I mean, out of the eight million people around the world I talked about that die from uh, smoking, one million of those is passive smokers. So one million, so it's, it's actually seven million smokers that dies from from uh, smoking. It's one million that dies from passive smoking. But we should not uh, we should not confuse ourselves and and, and uh, uh, talk about the vaping because vaping is an aerosol, so it doesn't contain the particles. So so the aerosols coming from vaping is not dangerous for the surrounding in the same way as smoking. So smoking. Passive smoking is also killing people, but vaping is not. Usually, you regulate that. In the, okay. Usually, you regulate that in the same way. If you go on an airplane, or you're a public building, or you're a kindergarten, or where wherever you are, vaping and cigarettes are banned altogether. But it's not really fair to do that in that way. Okay. Okay. That's 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 important to understand. And so, okay, I, I want to still stick with uh, the t- oh, this whole topic is about nicotine here. But uh, I know you mentioned that you take nicotine. I, I, I've never participated. Vlad has never participated. We may be in the minority, Vlad, for even not trying weed or anything like that. Uh, but in America, of course, of course not. It's very... Of course, you're not trying weed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, so is nicotine inherently bad? So, for example, I've never, uh, uh, you know, tried a cigarette or, uh, of course, uh, one of these nicotine pouches. So is this something you say, hey, if you're if, if you're not if, if you were never uh, exposed to nicotine, if you never thought about it, you should start you should stay far away from it because. I, as far as I understand, nicotine pouches are great for those cigarette smokers to uh, get off of that. So I, I kind of want to get your uh, view of of this. So f- someone takes someone take like someone like me. Should I be staying away from nicotine pouches in general? Yeah, of course you should stay away from nicotine. I mean, even if ni- the addiction is a philosophical question. Okay, right. You can you can get addicted. And it can be a problem for you, especially if you start early in early years. Then you mm-hmm. you develop a, a, a deeper addiction than you do if you wait until you're 25 or 30 and b- 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 before you start with it. So of course you should stay away from it. And uh, nicotine is uh, dangerous for you, your body, if you are uh, getting pregnant, because you mm-hmm. get you, there's a risk to get a premature birth. If you use nicotine in the same way as you drink coffee, you should stay away from a coffee right. as well right. when, you, when you're pregnant, because there is a risk that you get a premature birth and that is not uh, good for you. Uh, secondly, uh, nicotine increase the pulse uh, slightly in the same way as coffee. So you get that's that gives you the focus. And if you have a problem with uh, heart disease, then you don't get heart disease from the nicotine, but the, you get a you go you get a more serious 
you can get a more serious heart attack than you otherwise should get because uh, the bloodstream has compressed. The, the, so, so it can it's impact you. So, so, I, so I can't, yes. So I can't, but, but, it, but it's just for uh, 30 minutes. Uh, then it's uh, back to normal. So, so I can't recommend anyone to start using nicotine. Of course not. Right. But to use it, it's quite nice. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I, I don't know. Vlad, you've never tried to Vlad? The what, cigarettes? Or I don't know, anything that... I mean, I tried just time. once, yeah. but you know, like I wasn't taking it like a couple of months just once in my life maybe just i mean you know like they all advertising why everybody is even starting especially kids because it's cool you know it's cool to have cigarettes and this is why everybody at least in my country in in central asia this is why everybody is starting because it's cool and nice you know especially back then now it's more like healthy kind of lifestyle nobody is even trying to start but before it 100 percent to impress even girls, maybe, you know, you are smoking. Right. <laughs> smoking is a female skewed mm. uh, thing. So females, they smoke and the males, they use the oral nicotine. But now it's getting more. So, so, so we have uh, interesting cancer statistics from Sweden where all the females get cancer and um, lung cancer and uh, not all, but, but, uh, of course, every second smoker gets uh, lung cancer, and then uh, the males doesn't. It's because right. so so you can actually see you can see you can see in the population that that uh, Sweden has the lower lowest smoker related illness among the OECD countries all around the world. Mm. But that is that is thanks for the history from uh, guys using oral tobacco nowadays oral nicotine instead of the females. But but they are they are picking up. The females are picking up now, especially with the white ones, because the uh, the, uh, the traditional uh, snooze with, with a tobacco in your mouth, it's, it's uh, I mean, it's brown. And uh, you're brown and you get a little bit brown in your mouth. And when you take the snooze out, you're brown around the fingers. If you're working in the office, the paper getting brown and the white shirt is getting brown. And uh, I mean, it's, it's not it's not perfect. Mm -hmm. You can like the flavor from tobacco and how it tastes, but it's not practical. Mm. So, so now the so now the nicotine power should make is more equalized. And uh, if I look over to my neighbor country, Norway, uh, there are young females between sixteen and twenty-four. It's one percent smoking incidence, which is amazing. It's one percent only. Yes, but I mean, but, but I mean, it's twenty percent that use nicotine pouch. Of the one percent, you're saying twenty percent is using nicotine pouches. So t total total nicotine uses among uh, Norwegian uh, females, sixteen to twenty four, is twenty one percent. Okay. One percent one percent is using is smoking. Twenty percent is uh, using nicotine, and that will be a fantastic health effect in Norway right. next ten twenty years. Well, and what does the climate look like in in the U.S.? I, I suppose our st stats are more grim. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 not at all. Because it's, uh, it's uh, as I told you before, California is uh, taking the lead in, in uh, using uh, nicotine powder. But, but California is doing good. Uh, Texas is doing good. Really? Uh, Florida is doing good. Uh, New York is picking up. I was there uh, this spring in New York. Yeah, we, there was uh, nicotine pouches in all the stores. Mm. Uh, I saw people using it, and, and uh, so it's it's uh, picking up. And I and I hope it's because uh, people are educated and that they are converting from smoker to safer nicotine. And uh, if you don't uh, do that, then uh, I hope that people see it as a vaccine. So, so like the youth starts. They shouldn't start. They shouldn't start. But if they start, they start with uh, the nicotine, nicotine pouch, pouch instead. In, in instead instead of the smoking. Do you see more people taking nicotine pouches who never smoke, or they're switching? I mean, uh, we have today one million. Yeah, we have, we have passed one million consumers global. Uh, one million consumers in Europe and uh, US in total. Out of those, uh, sixty percent is former mm -hmm. smokers. And then out of uh, the rest, we have 25% uh, dual users. So you have a lot of people that is uh, using nicotine pouch as the 
flight mode cigarette or the flight mode uh, flight mode of vaping where, where you can't use the product that you want then you use an equity pouch but, but what we can see is that they are gradually moving to the more convenient products so maybe you start if you have been a smoker you smoke then you switch to vaping after you have vapes you see that it's, it's, it's complex to have the electricity and you can't use it everywhere and then you move over to the nicotine pouch and then hopefully you leave nicotine in uh, india and and you're you're free from your addiction if you don't like it so we see that we said see that moving is but of course there is uh, people that start with it and that's why we are working so hard with uh, use access prevention so it's not only age check it's also education for parents education for school uh, how to talk about the nicotine or why you should not start early. I mean, it's a cost. It becomes a cost with it. It's an unnecessary cost if you don't have it. Uh, as I told you, the addiction is getting harder. You get harder addiction the earlier you start. So why not wait one more year? Why not wait two years? And that's the type of guidance we give to uh, uh, teachers at school. Then it's also the traceability that we are developing. So, so we can see exactly who has bought it, who has we delivered to, and anyone that would like to come in and check uh, who was behind that order. You can see exactly what person ordered it, bought it, uh, who received it, uh, at what, what address. So we're trying to develop the youth access prevention to make sure that uh, uh, we don't get any youth into the category. But Because, it, of course, I mean... There is an offset uh, between youth access and the saved right. lives. I don't have the map. I don't have the map. But, but let's say if, if we say one life for a form, from a former smokers, maybe the value of that is uh, 100 kids being addicted or it's uh, 1,000 kids. Or, but I mean, there is an offset between that. So, so both we as an online, the, the, the leading online retailer uh, in US have a responsibility to act in line with society's expectations on us when it comes to youth access prevention. At the same time, as we also take it seriously to inspiring to healthier enjoyment for the smokers. So it's that balance we try to strike. Yeah. Is it is it safe to say that with uh, the nicotine pouches you can get rid of the cigarette addiction, and then definitely, definitely. But I mean, uh, the nico kick you get from uh, the first puff of a cigarette it's unique. So, so we, you need to develop an attractive alternative product to to make it easy for the smokers to quit. And that's why if you if you move into a pharmacy and you see all those, or uh, maybe it's easier on an online pharmacy and, and have a look at all the pharmaceutical uh, nicotine replacement therapies. It's different flavors, different gums. It's uh, pills. It's it's aerosols. It's patches. It's everything. I mean, it's hundred different products. And that's but because we have to try to offer the smokers the best alternative product as possible. So they get the kick and they are satisfied with that product. Because the, a lot of smokers try uh, to get rid of the smoking, but they get they move back. Yeah. So that's why we, it's important to, to build in the attractiveness in the uh, other product. Because it's hard to compete with a cigarette. Another important question, is it more expensive or less expensive? Because cigarettes are out of it's the It's less roof. expensive. It's less expensive. I mean, you can get a, you can get uh, twenty pouches for uh, uh, three, four dollars online. And for how long will it last you? Yeah, uh, I would say in average, uh, you use one can for uh, two days. Two. So it's two nothing. Days for $4. It's a saving. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think, and, and for the listeners here who are listening to this, the the main thing, and the main, and especially if you're not a smoker, you may be asking, you know, why are we talking about this topic? It's actually a very important topic to talk about because the the whole dilemma here is the the, the lack of education around this space. Uh, this is actually a big problem in many different industries, but it's a lack of education. So you're absolutely right, Marcus, is, is that we need to give smokers the tool, we need to give teachers the tools, 
to educate, whether it's a youth, whether it's adult, especially the youth, that if in this worst case scenario, you're going to go down the route of trying to smoke a cigarette, uh, you should know that there are far better alternative options uh, that can save your life, that can give you much better odds. And uh, the only way to do this is through proper education. And so, yeah, edu- it is, it is a, it's, it's very important. Now, I do want to talk about something interesting. I saw that you posted uh, that you uh, actually were talking about the dangers of secondhand smoke for household with pets. Uh, people who have cats and yes. dogs, and I don't think this is a topic that people are really uh, familiar with. Uh, so it is detrimental. It is detrimental uh, to a household where you have a cat or a dog and you're smoking. Correct? Is that correct? What are the dangers? Can you? That's can correct. You please share with us some I mean, information. For, 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 first of all, first of all, the reason why we talk about. I mean, I mean, I don't care about. Uh, uh, the, the, the pets that you have at home, actually. I care about your life, and I'd say your life. But it seems like uh, humans and pet owners that smoke, they care more about the pets than themselves. <laughs> Agreed. So it's, so it's, one, it's, it's, one, it's one more, one, one angle where, that we try to, where we try to convert smokers to safer alternatives. Because if they don't care about themselves, because they think I can do whatever I, I can do whatever I want with myself, and and I will not die tomorrow, and so on. But if we talk about the the fishes that they have in the aquarium, or we talk about the the cats that they have, uh, and and or the dog, and the harm that we can uh, that the smoke, the secondhand smoke, can give to them, then that is, according to the studies we have seen, that is a bigger reason for the pet owner to stop right. smoking. Uh, to treat their pets in a good way, so that's the rationale behind it. So we try to reach out in any way, any possible way to get people and to quit. And that is a good way, at least in America. How about in your country? How? What is the attachment? How is the culture like uh, for people with animals? Is it the same? Because in America, again, not everybody, but generally speaking, uh, people treat their animals like their ch- child. They will, you know, buy them yeah, organic exactly. food. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And spend yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. their entire life savings on a, you know, fixing their broken limb. Uh, so it's very serious here. We, we we love our animals. Is it the same? Yes, okay. so, and that's a good thing, as you said. You know, you, you care about the person, <laughs> and, and that's a good angle to actually. Yeah, they but, care more, and they care more. They care more more about right. their uh, their their pets than right. the kids. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of sad. <laughs> well, I mean. Listen, it's a, it's a, it's a joke, but you know, as they say, there is always some truth to a joke. So, uh, but you're absolutely correct. I mean, listen, every cigarette smoker knows that cigarettes are very dangerous and harmful. But you make the point that if they may care, if they will care about that, they don't want to pass, they don't want to cause cancer in their cats or dogs. They may opt for a safer alternative, whether it's via nicotine pouches or whatever the case may be. So that is a really good angle. Uh, I I want to talk a little bit about uh, consumer awareness versus corporate responsibility. So when it comes to consumer awareness, and I know you do a lot of, you know, you do these discussions to bring awareness, uh, but there's also a debate between how much a company, you know, uh, is responsible for the education versus the consumer. So my question to you is, do you believe enough is being done to inform the consumers of the benefits versus the risk or uh do companies across the board in this space need to step up and really spend some money on trying to spread the education of safer nicotine alternatives to save lives uh, i think yeah, everybody has the responsibility to educate the uh, people about the risk uh, the risk with with nicotine with, with different nicotine uh, products and and uh, we are measuring that in all our markets and it's uh, terrible to see that in many markets uh, people believe that vaping or uh, nicotine pouches or the oral tobacco is more dangerous than smoking mm. Uh, and the, re- the reason uh, behind that is that nobody longer talks about the deaths from smoking because now it's the vaping and the nicotine pouches that is increasing. And then in media, 
and uh, also from state agencies and governments and and then then they talk about the youth of panic ep- epidemic youth are picking it up uh, the in- college kids are starting to use vape and that's the perspective and when you have that media perspective and especially in in uh, the in especially counties and uh, cities and, and the states in the US is banning different flavors and uh, putting different bans in place without knowing anything about it, just to show that they do something against it. Then, then that is uh, actually do, resulting in the opposite, that nobody cares about the smoking mm-hmm. and the cigarettes. Because we have stopped talking about the smoking-related illness. Instead, we're talking about addiction and youth access. And that is important. Yes, it is. But it's hiding the 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 everything behind uh, they're hiding the fact that you're dying from smoking. And uh, UK is mostly the most progressive country when it comes to harm reduction. That, that's, uh, nicotine is fine. You know, no one should start with, with uh, nicotine. But, but it's better for, it's better, any, anything is better than smoking. So you should uh, start vaping if you're a smoker. You should use other alternative nicotine products. And there you have public uh, public funded campaigns. Mm-hmm. That state agencies and uh, the Royal College of Physicians and and uh, the, the the physicians themselves is out campaigning uh, for vaping, okay. but still, but still, people believe that vaping is more dangerous than uh, smoking, and there is no reason why I should stop smoking. Yes, because the media discussion about uh, addiction, youth, flavors, and everything. So, so that's number one. Uh, we need more uh, information, but we have a flood of new regulations coming in uh, uh, with some ca- some kind of panic about uh, nicotine that doesn't kill anyone. And I have not heard anyone that have uh, been died from using snus or 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 uh, a nicotine pouch. But but uh, there is also a, a history from the tobacco companies because. Of course, there is different uh, producers of nicotine pouches and vape and so on. But I mean, the big tobacco companies, they have misbehaved in the history. Uh, when they talked about that nicotine is not addictive, uh, smoking doesn't kill you, and, and all the tries, how they have tried to fool us. And they, have, they, they, they suffer from that, um, that uh, historical uh, mistake mm-hmm. to lie for the population. And, because of that, they don't really feel that they can contribute to discussion. Mm-hmm. They can develop the products, they can put it on the market, but they can't go and get out because they just want to try to fool right. people again uh, and kill them again and find other uh, other ways of doing it. So, so um, uh, that's why we as a retailer an online retailer that has direct contact with our consumers. We just, we don't just meet them in a brick and mortar store. We we have a dialogue with them. Or we ship to them. We have a lot of touch points on our websites with just our consumers, where we try to step up and, and uh, collect the information that exists and make it uh, in a credible uh, put that in a credible way and uh, try to reach out to our consumers in the. In the situation they are to take the take take the information to them, but of course um, regulators should make sure that cigarettes is harder regulated than uh, vaping and than uh, nicotine pouches. So you understand it yourself, so you can understand it yourself. You should make sure with taxes that you have different price okay. points of different products. Then people understand. It should be differences in where you can use it. You should never, you should not be allowed to use cigarette anywhere. Uh, and then you should, so, so people understand smoking is dangerous. I can just use it on my backyard or in my own house, perhaps if I don't have pets, of course. <laughs> but, but, but nicotine pouches and vaping should be allowed in other places. Okay. Then you communicate in a better way. Okay. Get... What product do the society want me to okay. use if I are going to use the product? So if we put on a scale, basically, uh, cigarettes is the most dangerous. Then goes vaping and then goes uh, nicotine pouches, right? Yeah. And okay, but I mean, the, but the scale is not. It's, the scale is like 
a cig- if a cigarette is hundred, right, right, that's not right. It's yeah. Then then vaping is five. Okay. And nicotine pouch is maybe four. Okay. So I mean, and, and and auto, and then also if you put those scales in place, then you wait. You have different weight in those. I mean, then some scales they take in the farmer, the tobacco farmer. He also gets some harmony of for- harvesting. Right. Right. Then you could you can add on what is addiction? Is that harmful? Maybe yeah, for the pregnant then and if you have problems with your heart, yes, yeah, so maybe we give that to you. Let's compare pouches and, and the vaping. I mean people who I know who are, who are taking vapes, you know, they are not just taking like cigarettes, for example, you smoking for one, two minutes and it's finished. Then let's say this uh, nicotine pouches you take also like for a couple of minutes, right? But when they have this vape, they just vaping all day long. It is going and vaping nonstop. Yeah. Isn't it more harmful than uh, the nicotine pouches? Yeah, as I mean, I mean, all inhalation is a problem. But I mean, but it's no combustion in, in the vapes. So uh, I would, and, and keep in mind that I'm not a physician here. Right. I just read the reports that other publish. But, but I mean, in, in the vape, you have the flavors and, and you can get a few particles from the vape. So depending on the flavors, no, the, the, the particles that comes from the flavoring in the e-juice, uh, you can, you get them down in a line and, and from a theoretical point of view, that is not good. So actually you should stay away from everything that goes into the lines, even if it's, uh, smoke from down the streets, right. from the cars, or, uh, you should have nothing, no particles in the what line. What about the people? like a passive smokers for the vape. Is it such thing or no? Uh, that's almost nothing. Mm. So that's not relevant even to talk okay. about. Okay. Uh, okay. I want to speak about uh, the future. <laughs> so in, yeah, for sure. So in the landscape of nicotine alternatives, uh, you know, it's consistently shifting and with evolving legal, legal regulations, public sentiment, and health research, where do you see industry in the next five to ten years? I know. I mean, uh, I follow the industry, and uh, they are really pushing to convert more uh, more uh, smokers into healthier alternatives, and 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 uh, they are pushing, 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 and driving innovation and, and doing science to get to find new better products and they also they are also uh, measured by the market the, sh- the stock market and their uh, sustainability reports and the ESG agendas that they have to increase faster 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 the the the, the amount of um, of uh, risk reduced products like vaping uh, and uh, nicotine pouches um so so uh, it's going in that direction, and and for, for U.S. and uh, Europe, I think uh, we are doing good. But then you also have the rest of the world. Then you have uh, Africa and and uh, and uh, Asia and and uh, and uh, South America uh, that don't maybe have the amount of electricity or you don't have the cash because it's quite it's quite cheap to produce a cigarette pack a pack of cigarettes. Mm-hmm. So, so uh, yeah. you, I'm, I'm five to ten years, uh, Europe and US is doing good, thanks to the product innovation from from the industry that they have all that that they have in the pipeline. But we will still struggle with, with um, Asia, Africa, and other countries with the smoking related illness, unfortunately. Do you think there will be other well big companies to enter those territories to try to spread education, or is it a manufacturing issue? Or no, yeah, I say, I say they, they are there, but but it's a cost it's issue. A cost, yeah, it's cheaper. It's a, it's a, yeah. it's cheaper to uh, buy the tobacco from the local 100%. farmers and then uh, have a low cost working labor and they put it into a cigarette and then uh, sell it. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> You know, we, we, we discussed that uh, the Nika Kick also, I mean, speaking of the education, you know, that Nika Kick actively educates the youth, the next generation, not to use to smoke at all. Does it mean that you're basically cutting your own market share? Yes, we do. But I mean, that's why we also uh, 
talk about uh, enjoyment because uh, nicotine is quite enjoyable to use. So, so, uh, but, but uh, that's that's for sure. I mean, when the smokers are when the smokers are gone, uh, then uh, we will have a problem with our with our business. But hopefully, back then, then we don't have any smoking related illness, and maybe we then finally we get the right perception about uh, nicotine and nicotine could be compared with a cup of coffee mm. instead of now be compared with with a death you know i also saw some your recent posts where you shared that the swedish government has proposed a shift in the country's tobacco policy goals moving from reducing all tobacco yeah. to prioritizing harm reduction so what is what exactly is this harm reduction could you please explain yeah, but that's uh, first of all, I would say that uh, in in US we have FDA and they have always had a scientifically approved policy, uh -huh. and uh, they have understood that themselves. Mm -hmm. So in in US FDA at least FDA understands it. Uh, they know uh, the different uh, dangers from different products. Uh, they they're only calculating the map between uh, youth access prevention compare with, with uh, the, the smoking related illness. So, so FDA is already there, but in Sweden, we have had, despite our fantastic history, we, we the lowest uh, line cancer rates in among the OECD countries. Our strategy has always been to decrease the nicotine and tobacco consumption as a whole. Mm -hmm. That's, that has been the public health strategy. When it's come to the alcohol, we have had a strategy that says that we should decrease the harm that comes out from alcohol consumption. That's something totally different. Then the method could be to decrease the number of uh, wine bottles that, is, that the Swedish population are drinking. But, but, but uh, it could also be that you should drink less often or uh, you should uh, drink, you know, not drink hard liquor or something. And now the Swedish government has changed that from decrease the total consumption of tobacco and nicotine to decrease the harm that comes out of uh, out of uh, consuming tobacco and nicotine. And this opens up for the Swedish government now to regulate uh, snus and nicotine pouches in another way, more liberal way than the cigarettes. So the population of Sweden understands better the difference between them. So that's a huge step for Sweden, and it's a huge step also for the rest of Europe within the European you Union. Mentioned for alcohol, it's the same. Are they following the harm reduction route for to uh, for alcohol or no? Yes. So how does that yes. look like? So instead of reducing, in, 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 instead of reducing the actual, for example, there's 750 milliliters in a wine bottle. Instead of saying, okay, you package that down to 500. What does a harm reduction look like? I'm just I'm trying to understand. I mean, it could be. I mean, it's like uh, we have high taxes, really high taxes on hard liquor. Okay. Okay. The lower lower taxes on wine. Okay. Okay. I okay. And then, I got then it. we have lower lower taxes, even lower tax on beer, and on uh, light beer is no tax. So that's mm, that makes okay. uh, that's interesting. <laughs> that is interesting. Not, not, yeah. So then, you, so then you guide, then you guide yeah, right. people. It's a little bit social. It's a little, little bit socialist. <laughs> but then you guide, <laughs> then you guide people to make their own good right. choices. Exactly. I, I like that. I, that's you don't you don't choose for right. them. You don't choose for right. them. But you 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 guide them what to choose. That's I a nice. I actually like that a lot. That's a good idea because you know what in America what the kids do. I mean, in high school or college. They get, they go run to the the liquor store and they will buy the cheapest vodka or you know it's it's extremely extremely harmful, but maybe if it was guided in a way where I don't know the light the lightest beer you know three percent four percent I don't know ABV consumption that, that would be better as opposed to you know this a, a, yeah. a, a young eighteen year old child you know drinking half a bottle and then you know you know what happens next you know throwing up and you know, so. Yeah, I like I, that's, huh? Yeah, that's interesting. And where, where in all this? So that's harm in reduction. All this yeah. uh, conversation, uh, the hookah smoking. Uh, who, oh, my, again, uh, all smoking is uh, harmful. I mean, is it on the same level as vaping, or more harmful or less? No, less, less hookah. Hookah is less harmful than vaping because uh, in hookah you still have tobacco and you still have combustion, even if oh, it so passes, is terrible. passes no, through water. So hookah is terrible for you. 
because it's combustible. Who cares is bad for you? That is combustible. Yeah, it's bad for you. It's combustion, even if it passes through water and then you, so you get less, probably less smoke into the lungs. But, but I mean, there you also have, in a hookah, it's tobacco uh, blended with uh, fruity, fruit, fruity flavors. So that, yeah. That's why I'd be I, better off with nicotine. Pass. Stick, stick, stick away, stick away, stick away from combustion. Yeah, very good advice. Uh, I want to wrap this up. This has been an extremely wonderful conversation. I want to talk a little bit more of a personal note. What motivated you to, to take this role uh, of leading legal and external affairs at NicoKick? Is there a personal connection to the mission, or is this a unique challenge we're tackling? What's the, what's your reasoning behind it? Uh, I mean, I, I've, I've always been uh, working with uh, communication, and I have um, uh, uh, understood the strength in, 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 in be a dialogue with people, having a dialogue with people and then making an impact that can make a change. And that's why I always uh, try to find tasks that can make the world better. I mean, I work with uh, getting HPV vaccine, uh, vaccine programs in place, okay. uh, minimizing cancer coming out from it. I work with... Uh, decreasing the VAT on books to get people to read more books. Uh, I have helped uh, count pushing away Russian attempts to issuing passports for the Russian-speaking population. I worked with uh, getting electricity cables in place uh, so they can close down all the nuclear power plants. I worked with uh, uh, helping countries to uh, stabilize their economy. Uh, uh, so, so they can get introduced into the euro in the European Union, so they don't have to devaluate and get poorer. I try to find tasks that can make the world better, and uh, and and the strength I will working with is the dialogue. Mm -hmm. and try to find the dialogue, and, and that, like we have yeah. here, and and I am impressed about the effect that we can have, and how we can spread uh, the news about the better world, and, and the. That was what I saw when I when I uh, saw the tobacco industry and saw the results uh, from Sweden in, on the health effects. With uh, it was so so clear with uh, lung cancer rates between males and, and females. And, and what was the reason? So the opportunity to join out join into Nico Kick and spread the news not only for Sweden but spread it outside to Norway and uh, Germany and UK and uh, Austria Switzerland and now also US it's it's a it's a it's a good task for me to take on it's it's a good next step now it's also the rest then we have the rest of the world I mean we still have eight million people yep, die that is very true every year That's very true. We have a, just to, to wrap things up, we have a tradition on the podcast where a previous guest gets to ask you any question. Um, and so we have the question here, and then the, I will ask you to ask any question of your choice to our next guest. Uh, the, this question here is, what is one specific trait that you have that has contributed to your success? whether it's a career success or personal success, what is the one specific trait that you know that you possess within you for, you know, who you are today? Um, my ability to listen. Mm. That's a very powerful. Because answer. without, before, because uh, without listening, you don't have the right to ask the question. And the question starts the dialogue pushing. I love that. And actually, this is a very, very good skill and a skill that many of us lack, which is the ability to listen. Marcus, this has been a wonderful conversation. Please let us know the question and any question of your choice. What shall we ask our next guest? It was a hard one. Yeah, it's a hard one. <laughs> <laughs> No, was the hardest the question, question of all so far. Me, right? You really is. Yes, <laughs> it was. I am uh, worried about uh, the the debate climate in our society, um, where we don't have the dialogue between uh, uh, 
different parts of the society or different uh, political parties and and uh, it's it's not it's not uh, us or europe i mean it's it's all over the world uh, so i would like to have a solution on how can we make sure that we actually uh, can have a dialogue between everyone and anyone uh, to make the world better because I'm worried but when uh, we we end up in uh, different uh, echo chambers right. uh, we don't we don't meet we don't meet each other uh, I would don't want to talk with each other we would like to misinterpret each other's will right. uh, so, so, so I'm uh, how do we stop the echo chambers around the world and, and create a dialogue over the borders. I love that question. One which will not have an answer. Yeah, it's not yeah. just one answer. We can just uh, record the whole podcast, I think, on the, on this topic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's a very good and very important problem. One which I'm worried about also, Marcus. Well, thank you so much for being here today. It was an absolute pleasure getting to speak with you. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll look forward to seeing all the amazing work that you do from today and in the future as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Anayat. Thank you, Vlad.